cows come from California. Look for dairy brands with the real California seals. Vote for Shelby, love! Victory Toyota of North Wilkesboro, home of the lifetime warranty. Right now, you can drive for zero money down, zero percent interest, and zero payments for a full three months. Plus, come in and test drive any new Toyota and receive $500 in free gas vouchers. We're open late and all day Sunday. The Triad's only live radar, Super Doppler 12, live 24-7 on WXII 12 Weather Plus and WXII12.com. Creating a fear from us, I, it's just sad to see all, all this happening. I mean, we have nothing to be feared about. A Triad Muslim family defends its religion and lifestyle. The practice of Islam is coming under heavy scrutiny during this year's presidential race. Good evening, everybody. I'm Margaret Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us. That family says they are tired of seeing their beliefs ridicule, especially when all they're trying to do is live the American dream. Our Kim Gebby has spoke with the family, and she joins us with more, Kim. Well, Margaret, there's an estimated 15,000 Muslims in the Triad area, and that one family you just heard from, we spoke with them tonight, and they say the Muslim community feels offended and isolated as this election comes to an end. But many worry that some of the fear tactics being used to win will last long after this election is over. The Bakir family in Greensboro says they are ready for this presidential election to be over. There have been some, uh, some of the comments that have been very uh, negative and uh, totally um, out of touch types of comments. They say they're tired of seeing their Muslim religion linked with extremist terrorists, fear-mongering, and anti-American sentiments on the campaign trail. They're secluding religion, they're isolating it. I mean, there's so much religious freedom from the start of, from the First Amendment. I mean, it shouldn't be like that, but mm -hmm. it's unfortunate. But what bothers them the most is the belief that surfaced at some rallies, where voters claim Barack Obama is an Arab and a Muslim. He's an Arab as if Americans should fear or distrust him if he were. Does it matter if, what if, if he was a Muslim? What if McCain was a Muslim? Or if he was an Arab? Uh, should this make a difference? When does religion become uh, a, disqu a qualifier or disqualifier? for the highest office in the country. Candidates in the past, including President Bush, have courted the Muslim community for votes. This time, both Obama and McCain are going after Latinos and Jewish voters, but keeping a distance from the estimated five to eight million Muslims in the U.S. Bakir says the 1,500 members of his mosque in Greensboro are well aware they are getting the political cold shoulder. They see that they are being ignored. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very difficult for them to, to support one candidate or one person forcefully like any other mon minority would do. And the Bakirs say they want their two little girls to know the American dream. And they hope being a Muslim won't stand in their way. And the Bakirs and hundreds of others from their mosque in Greensboro go to churches of all dominations on Sundays across the triad and try to talk to congregations about being a Muslim and any misconceptions people might have about that religion. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. We appreciate it. Well, North Carolina is a battleground state and both parties know it. And that's why Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin will campaign tomorrow in Asheville. She'll speak at the Asheville Civic Center beginning at four. Last week, Palin visited Elon University for a rally and private fundraiser in Greensboro. Then on Monday, Palin's vice presidential opponent will campaign in Greenville and Greensboro. Senator Joe Biden will hold an early vote for change rally at East Carolina University. Gates for that event open at 9 a.m. And later that day, Biden will return to the triad. He'll speak at the Price Bryan Performance Place on North Davies Street in Greensboro. Doors for that event open at 1 o'clock. Last week, Biden made stops in Charlotte, Winston-Salem, and Raleigh. And on Tuesday, the Republican presidential candidate returns to the Tar Heel State. John McCain will bring his Joe the Plumber tour to Fayetteville's Crown Center. Doors open at 2 p.m. and it will begin around 4.30. That event is free. Then on Wednesday, the wife of Barack Obama will stop in the Tar Heel State. Michelle Obama will host an early vote for change rally in the Rocky Mount area. She'll emphasize the importance of voting early in this year's historical election. And with 10 days remaining until Election Day, John McCain is hitting the campaign trail in New Mexico. The Arizona senator appeared before an enthusiastic crowd of supporters at a rally. 
During his speech, the Republican presidential nominee criticized his opponent, along with the Democratic Party, for wanting to withdraw from Iraq and increase taxes. The Democrats' answer to the challenges we face is to lower our defenses and raise our taxes. That's not the vision I have for America. I want to strengthen our defenses and lower our taxes. McCain also touched on the economy and health care. Barack Obama campaigned in Las Vegas, Nevada today. Obama told the crowd that McCain is busy trying to distance himself from President Bush, but he is too late for that now, and the focus should be on the economy. You know, a couple of weeks ago, my opponent's campaign said that if we keep talking about the economy, we're going to lose. So they, so they said they're going to be focusing on attacking me instead. Now, uh, that's one campaign promise they've actually kept. Both Obama and McCain are targeting a trio of states this weekend, campaigning in Nevada, Colorado, and New Mexico. You'll want to stay with WXII 12 News and WXII12.com as we bring you the latest in the race for the White House. Tonight, the FBI has joined in the search for the nephew of Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson. The seven-year-old hasn't been seen since the mother and brother of the Dreamgirls actress were found dead in a Southside Chicago home Friday. Tonight, the boy's mother made a plea for his safe return. Kristen Dahlgren has the latest. At the Chicago church where Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson once got her singing start, today the star's sister made a public plea. All I ask. I don't care who you are, just let my baby go. One day after Hudson's mother and brother were shot to death in her mom's Southside home, the singer's nephew, seven-year-old Julian King, is still missing. William Balfour, Hudson's sister's estranged husband, is in custody. But Balfour, who's on parole after serving time for attempted murder, hasn't been charged with anything in this case as police continue their investigation. We've got a lot of forensic information to go through. You had a double homicide inside a home. That creates a lot of potential evidence. It is the same home where friends and family once gathered to watch Hudson's Oscar win. Today, instead, a scene of mourning. We've just been feeling sadness for the family because, I mean, we feel as though that they're part of us, too. This is my mother. Hudson, who credits her mom with pushing her to first audition for American Idol, is reportedly devastated. She was screaming, and she just, she flew in. She flew in right away. The star now mourning her mother and brother as her family clings to hope her nephew will make it home safely. I love you. My mama's looking for you. I'm not going to stop until you come home. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. Well, still to come on WXII 12 News at 11, something sure did smell good today in Davidson County. Despite the rain, folks still showed up for the 25th annual Lexington Barbecue Festival. We'll take you there next. Also, see where in the Carolinas it rained so much that residents encountered flash flooding. Stay tuned. Well, after the rain moved out, things surely did warm up this afternoon with lots of sun. Will we have more of the same? I'll let you know coming up. For too long, there's been a power elite running our state government. The result has been a culture of arrogance. If you ask me, this is just plain wrong. Who agrees? The Asheville Citizen Times. The Winston-Salem Journal. The Charlotte Observer. The Greensboro News and Record. The Durham Herald Sun. I'm Pat McCrory. The difference is leadership. Nissan set out to create the perfect on-road vehicle and in the process created a category. Introducing two crossover leaders from Nissan, the redesigned Murano, awarded as an IIHS top safety pick, and the versatile Rogue, named 2008's best new small crossover. Lease the 27 MPG Nissan Rogue, just $199 a month. Don't follow the leader, own one at your Nissan dealer now. Support your Republican team November 4th. Bring Stokes County forward into a brighter future. Re-elect Brian Holloway for the North Carolina House. Re-elect Leon Inman for Commissioner. Re-elect Jimmy R. Walker for Commissioner. And re-elect Kathy Young for Register of Deeds. Support progress. Vote Republican November 4th. Let's take Stokes County forward into a new and brighter future. 
paid for by the Stokes County Republican Party. Okay, Tommy. Beep. Hey, Nancy's phone. Nancy doesn't have AT&T, so no bars here. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting the call about how Freddy the fun-loving dinosaur's costume was damaged. Apparently, they're sending T-Rex. Yeah, we missed that call. For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. Get our exclusive LG Shine for only $49.99 and get one free. Every major newspaper across the state has endorsed Kay Hagan for U.S. Senate, calling Hagan a bundle of brains and energy. A businesswoman, mother of three, Kay's ranked one of North Carolina's 10 most effective senators. With a moderate and business-friendly record, her priorities include fiscal responsibility, investing in education, health care reform, and new energy development. Kay Hagan, exactly the change our economy needs. I'm Kay Hagan, and I approve this message. In case you're just joining us, here are tonight's winning Powerball numbers, 48, 1, 3, 38, 14, and the Powerball is 2, the power play is 2, the estimated jackpot, a million bucks. This is one of the few times of year when you could eat a barbecue sandwich for breakfast and nobody would give you a hard time. Lexington, the self-proclaimed barbecue capital of the world, held its annual festival today. And as our Kenny Beck shows us, bad morning weather and a bad economy weren't enough to keep people away. Opening ceremonies were soggy and so were some of the rolls. But given the weather and the economy, the Lexington Barbecue Festival could have been a whole lot worse. When something has quality, it tends to last, and that's what's happened here. It's gotten bigger and better every year. The event, featuring thousands of barbecue sandwiches, hundreds of exhibitors, and several stages of live entertainment, has been around for 25 years now. Sonny Conrad has been involved in every single one. Well, it's just gotten bigger and more famous, and uh, we're having more people from further out, uh, from Lexington and out in uh, North Carolina coming in, and even out of state coming by. Some of those people waited in a lengthy line to get their official festival wine bottle and clothing autographed by renowned artist Bob Timberlake. Others stuck strictly to food. We won't spend, uh, buy a lot of stuff, uh, like I'd like to have a souvenir shirt and stuff, and I probably won't get any of that. Even with some people cutting back on spending, organizers say they didn't really feel the effects of our current financial situation. It's good or better than last year, and uh, so that, that speaks volumes. The new hotel at the winery is almost full, and the, all the other hotels are, are full, so I think we're, we're right on track for another great year. Another great year, even if your forecast and your finances were far from it. Kenny Beck, WXII 12 News. The festival wrapped up just this evening, and even though they don't charge admission, organizers estimate close to a thousand people attended this year. Nearly seven inches of rain fell around Charleston, South Carolina, causing flash flooding in some areas. This dog didn't seem to mind at all, but you can bet the homeowners on this flooded street weren't too happy. The water was pretty deep in some places. It was up to the bumper on this pickup truck. City crews were out clearing roadways of debris and towing flooded cars throughout the day. Boy, that's a lot of water. <laughs> Too much water. Yeah. We is. got just enough across the just area. Just enough, and it yeah. just went on out of here. And it's moved out, right? We had sunshine. Let's take a look at rainfall across the area. As you mentioned, there was a tremendous amount of rain down to the south. You see the areas there, dark green and yellow, showing more than three inches of rain. Across our area, we did get measurable rain, so that is nice to see. Half of an inch, Winston-Salem, Tobaccoville, three quarters of an inch in Sandy Ridge, Greensboro, Lawsonville, half an inch in Sheffield and more than an inch at State Road and in McGrady. So good soaking out there. Now that storm system has moved off to the east and we actually got a little bit of sunshine late Saturday afternoon. So that was nice to see. Now we've just got a strip of clouds down to the east, but nothing but blue sky out to the west. So we've got a great forecast for you as we head into Sunday. The high today managed to make it up to 70 degrees when the sun finally did come out. There's your official rainfall for both today and for the month at PTI airports. So a warm, beautiful day on tap for Sunday, but some big changes are coming again. Another blast of cold air with freezing temperatures even in the Piedmont Triad. That will head our way by Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Our normal low is 44 degrees by Wednesday morning below freezing in the heart of the Triad. The forecast low is 31. Now it's plenty cool out there right now. We've seen some 40s already. 48 Galax, 46 North Wilkesboro, Martinsville. Mid 50s right now across the Piedmont Triad communities. Winston-Salem, 
fake military uniform for an Easter present. That is a fantastic story. That was the year before she gave us all background checks on all of our neighbors for Christmas. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Excellent. The H1 is the big. Yeah, uh, it's the big. You know,